thank you very much for the invitation. It's um, a pleasure to be here. So, um, Can you see this? Yeah, they, they Can you hear this? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so they, they, they will tell. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, my title is Equivariant D Cap Modules on Rigid Analytic Spaces. So I will try to explain at least what cap means. It's not D modules; it's some variant of D modules. Um, I'll start with some motivation. Bang. So, um, the motivation in this story comes from the desire to understand representation theory of periodic groups. So, um, well, some branch of, let me be more precise. So, L will be a finite extension of QP. K will be some um, complete and discreetly valued field extension um, for simplicity. I haven't had time to work out all the details yet when k is more general. Um, so L will be the um, field definition of the group and k will be the field of coefficients in which the representations are taken. G will be a connected adaptive algebraic group and Roman G will be some open subgroup. Um, for most of my life, in fact all of my life, I have worked with compact periodic groups but I am now understanding that the theory should extend quite naturally to the general case, but in my mind usually G will be compact. So the problem is to understand uh, the following category of representations admissible locally analytic and locally and L analytic K representations <coughs> of G. I will not give the definition of this. Um, I will only say that it's the opposite of the category of co-admissible modules over the so-called locally analytic distribution algebra of G. Um, so let me write that down. Oops. been defined by Schneider and Teitelbaum about 13 years ago, so 14, 15 years ago. Um, it is some kind of distribution algebra. It's the strong dual of the ring of k-valued locally anal analytic functions on the group G. And I think of it as some completion of the group ring of G. So I don't want to spend my time discussing the beginning of this theory, it's sufficient to just think of it as a completion of the grouping. So this, this kind of distributions which are supposedly of compact support or, 
Can you give an idea geometrically about those distributions? Uh, yes, I think of compact support, yes. Yeah. So okay. you take the, f um, you do find it for um, <coughs> compact groups first, and then you take the direct limit over all possible co open compact subgroups inside of the general G. Okay, so for a compact group, it's like functionals and local analytic. Functional, for, for a compact group, it's functionals on the locally analytic um, functions on the group, yeah. Yeah, which are continuous when you fix radiuses of convergence or things like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, I think I understand. Yeah, so, yeah. I, hopefully I will, you will see the net flavor of it in what follows. Whatever it is, it's a uh, fresh ray space over the ground field K, and it contains the abstract group ring of the group G inside it. Okay. Is it important to say that you have a this that K is discrete? It cannot be seen. It's, it's important for my personal psychological advantage. <laughs> I'm more familiar with it. I don't think at this stage you don't, you don't need it. The theory works just fine. Like for yes. CP or, or the, you can take it to be. I think any complete extension of complete. Yeah, because in some old talks they mentioned something about spherically complete... Yes, I asked Peter stuff. why they did that. They said I didn't get a satisfactory answer, so I don't think yeah, that's so necessary. I, I got an impression from the old times that they had the technical difficulty in functional analysis or something. Which I'm not going to be doing at all, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's all algebra. But, no, 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 but I, the question is whether there is a... <laughs> A difficulty or just the or not, or maybe just trivial to get around it. This is the problem. Um, is the so I don't know because I so far I've been working with complete discrete value fields. Okay. okay, just to be safe. So um, now, the advantage of completing this group ring in this particular way is that it's big enough to contain the universal melting algebra of the Lie algebra of the group. So you can just differentiate local linear functions in the direction of a linear field and then evaluate the resulting derivative at one and that gives you a linear functional on the ring of k-valued local analytic functions and that gives you an embedding of the Lie algebra into a distribution algebra which extends by a universal property to a ring homomorphism. Um, and now my starting point, starting point of um, this work is the A terrible historian, so I will try not to miss anyone out. Um, the follows, following famous theorem due to Berlinson, Bernstein, Berlinsky, and Kashiwara um, tells you how to think about modules over the enveloping algebra. Let me remind you. every dominant regular weight of the maximal torus, and this works over an algebraic closure of the ground field, works over any algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Um, Or 
Um, lambda of H alpha is not um, in the set minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for every H alpha. Ah, not in. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so over C, of course, it's geometric, but here I'm just making you know, the minimal conditions needed to make the proof go through. Right, so um, representations of a semi-simple Lie algebra with a fixed action of a center, assuming it's nice enough, um, are equivalent to um, twisted D modules on the flag variety, which are quasi-coherent to modules. So you can, um, this opens the door to applications of methods from algebraic geometry to the study of representation theory of Lie groups and the algebras, and in particular led to the first proof of the catalan of conjectures. Um, so the goal of this work is to prove an analogue for this locally analytic distribution algebra. The hope being that this embedding is nice enough to support such an extension. Um, well, clearly, in order to do this, I, I will need to understand the analysis side of things a bit better. Right? What is this completion of the group ring? And in particular, what is... This is purely algebraic. This is some kind of analytic guy. So what's the relationship? We need to understand the completion better. Um, so I'll try to um, give my take on it. Um, so the first question from the point of view of this presentation to ask, I think, is, well, what is the closure of U of G inside DGK? So this is some kind of fresh algebra. What is the closure of the enveloping algebra? I'll tell you. So I define standard monomials in um, some basis for the Lie algebra over K. And let me make a definition. So here's the first time where these caps come in. What is this cap? It's a set of... Um, I'm sorry, I don't know standard notation for the set of um, non-commutative monomials, but this means just um, the commutative power series ring stripped of its com um, commutative multiplication, just thought of a set of formal power series with fixed ordering, right? No x2, x1s, x2s, just honest power series, commutative power series, but on it you can define a multiplication. So associative but not commutative. Correct. Yes. And, and I, I don't, can't define it all, all of it, only on um, those power series which are convergent everywhere on the dual of the Lie algebra. So this definition seems to be dependent on the choice of basis. I've chosen it doesn't. You can choose, check quite easily. It doesn't depend on the choice of basis. Um, it's an intrinsic ring extension of the um, enveloping algebra. It can be defined in this algebraic way with no mention of completions. Topologies. To make, to make symmetry, to make sy symmetries. 
Yes. Symmetric algebra over the uh, symmetric algebra over the algebra is not as an algebra, but a vector space isomorphic to each. Okay. That's another question. And so it completely but, fits. Okay. Yes, yes. But I, I would have to take yes, no, S of I don't, G. I don't understand exactly what you're doing because if the let us say you take an abelian Lie algebra, then you you must uh, then you, the symmetric algebra is the enveloping algebra, so it is commutative, but you, are, you claim to be taking non-commutative power series. So, if, so for every monomial, the other permutations are different monomials in your no, that convention. Was, that's what I said. So it's, it's too much. It, you get something bigger, it will not be... I don't see how you map, for example, <coughs> UGK into this, because you can write everything in UGK once you fix a... a an ordering of the basis, you can write everything by Poincaré Birkhoff width uh, in, uh, as a sum of, sta of monomials which are arranged according to this ordering. So then you can use it to de define them. I don't know exactly how you. It's exactly what I said. Yes. You symmetrize things and it gets it. What? You can symmetrize. I can explain it to you. <coughs> Um, so, I haven't thought about this symmetrization argument for a while. I believe in a paper of Kohlhase, where he computes the center of a distribution algebra, he does use the argument you mentioned. I think it does work, although I haven't looked at it for a while. I just want to think of it as this set, and I can give it a ring structure in a unique way, such that the, um, the obvious map from algebraic thing into this thing is a ring homomorphism. But what is the obvious map? Um, Xi goes to Xi. The linear the map. Relations in the xi, xj minus xj, xi equals bracket xi. But the relations are not verified in the... But I've forgotten the, the um, ring structure here. This is now purely a set of a vector space. No more. Forget about the actual ring structure here. It's just a set of power series. The, I don't want to multiply them in the usual way. I'm asserting that there is a ring structure on it. No, but if you use this, this is, seems to be too large. Perhaps you want power series arranged where the x1, xd are arranged in their order. That is, only monomials of the form x1, a1, up to xd, ad, were, and not uh, in the other ordering. Because if you, if you have all those things, then the relations that you mentioned, you see, x1, x2, minus x2, x1, it's so maybe, maybe we could we postpone okay. a little bit. Maybe we can discuss it. Yes. Yeah. I will explain it to you at the end. I'm sorry for not making this sufficiently clear. Ah. So um, let's just define that to be the Aaron's Michael envelope. Um, and then the theorem, essentially due to Schneider and Tatterbaum. says that um, the closure of is this um, Aaron's Michael envelope. And so the strategy is to first localize U G K cap, localize in an imprecise sense, in the sense of proving the analogous theorem to the Bedenson Bernstein theorem listed later there, and then extend to the distribution algebra. So um, I want to explain how to do this at least. So, and I want to say why rigid analytic quantization
So another invariant way of presenting this um, set of power series, convergent power series, is as the ring of rigid analytic everywhere globally convergent functions on the dual of the Lie algebra. And this is only as a fresh space. Yes, rigid analytic. And again, I've forgotten here and here, I've forgotten the ring structure. I just want to say this is true as vector spaces. Now, um, one of the main parts. So we lost Beijing. Uh, so we wait just a few minutes to get Beijing again. Francois, compare what? Pékin de nouveau. Pékin, Pékin. Okay. Il faut, c'est, c'est eux de nous rappeler. Bon. Oh. Ça, c'est le Japon. Ça, c'est le Japon. Then we come. If you want a precise definition of the multiplic of the ring structure on this set, I will give it later. I will give a precise formula which gives the ring structure. No, the question is what did you, I thought I thought it is not the right set, not that the uh, <coughs> because when the algebra is commutative, you should use commutative power series. Uh-huh. So, okay. you see, it's, it's, the convergent functions are very small. No, but I didn't understand what is the set, is, let us say. I didn't understand what is the set, but maybe we can explain it in the end. Yes. It's, not, it's not important. Okay, so, maybe I can clear the board, but also the waiting for uh, Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, so the gene is again here. Okay, good. So both of you are. <coughs> I want to take the middle board, but this is probably <laughs> stupid. Okay. I get the middle board. So, um, observation, the, um, the way localization works involves um, an algebraic quantization. Um, so this is um, intuition. Let me try to make it a little bit more precise. I will write down three rings and two ring maps connecting them, which are non-commutative, which are filtered, whose associated gradients um, are geometric. So this guy quantizes just I find this space what is u lambda so I take the enveloping algebra and I mod out by um, an ideal to set that deal generated by a maximum ideal of the center of the, of the enveloping algebra, um, generated by things in the form z minus lambda of z. That thing quantizes 
a nail cone. And whatever D lambda is, it also has um, an increasing filtration, ring filtration, a filtration of sheaves of rings, whose associated graded um, is basically the ring of functions on the cotangent bundle of the flat variety. So there is, there is a filtration on D lambda. When you take the associated gradient and you take sheaf spec, you get a variety which turns out to be the cotangent bundle of the flag variety. And there is a well-known map connecting the cotangent bundle of the flag variety with a nil cone called the Springer resolution. The um, cotangent bundle of the flag variety is a resolution of singularities of the nil cone. Lambda corresponds to the infinitesimal central character. Yeah. Okay. Lambda is. Yeah. What is the quantization now? In this, um, in this context, I just mean um, <laughs> guru, this is that, nothing else. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make anything, this is just philosophy. Okay. It would be very nice if I could make it more precise. Um, but it tells me how to proceed in the periodic situation. localize this, um, well, I can do the same thing in the periodic setting because I still have the Harish Chandra centre sitting inside the enveloping algebra and I can still mod out by maximal ideals in that. What we need to do to define um, some kind of fresh phase space completion of D lambda, which will be a rigid analytic quantization. of the corresponding object, namely the rigid analytic variety underlying the algebraic variety cotangent bundle of the flat variety. Okay, so this is all motivation. Now I can maybe write down some precise statements and maybe the motivation will help you to understand why I'm writing them there. So now I will try not to say anything else about twists because they're just confusing and don't present any technical difficulties that I've found yet. So untwisted decap modules is what I want to talk about next. And this section is joint work with Simon Wadsley. Definition. Let X be a smooth athenoid variety over the ground field K. A Lee lattice on X is a finely generated submodule curly L of the derivations of O of X finely generated over the subring of power bounded elements. 
um, such that, um, well, it's a lattice. It's a Lie algebra. And it acts on power bounded, power bounded elements. And so a more correct way to say this is that it's a K circle comma OX circle Lie algebra or a Lie algebraoid um, over the integral structure. Given any such Lie lattice, and there are plenty of such things because whenever I have a basis for T of X over O of X, say V1 up to VD, maybe the Lie brackets of these guys don't lie inside the OX circle submodule generated by them but I can multiply them by a huge power of pi, and then they will be. But um, to any Lie algebraoid, I can associate its enveloping, universal enveloping algebra, U of L. Okay? Which is what? It's the smallest thing generated by so, um, what is a Lie algebra? You need a commutative ring, and you need a Lie algebra. You need the Lie algebra to be a finite, well, a module over the commutative ring. So that means that the commutative ring acts on the Lie algebra, and the Lie algebra then acts on the commutative ring. So, in the basic example, is T of x and O of x. And so, um, the melting algebra of T of x is going to give you D of x. Okay, and this works in great generality. All you need is just um, a commutative ring. And the Lie algebra and the module. Yes. 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 Completely general. Defined first by Hertz in 1953, and then Reinhardt, and then it just seems to have got lost. You said that. I know about Reinhardt, but you said there was a Hertz. Pseudo. Hertz, maybe. H E R Z. I don't know. Hertz. Anyway, so you um, you have your well, but then I can periodically complete it. And then I can invert pi, just like we do in rigid geometry. OK, so this will be some non-commutative Banach algebra over K. And under these assumptions, actually, will be Noetherian. But it unfortunately depends on this choice of lattice integral structure. So we get rid of that choice by taking the inverse limit over all things. <coughs> and this is just sort of elegant, but you only need just one Lie lattice. And then pi, big pi power multiples of it will be co final with big pi power multiples of any other Lie lattice. And so I could have just done inverse limit of u pi to the n l k hat. And so geometrically, this corresponds to stretching along big balls inside the cotangent bundle. Okay. Well, you are in an affinoid reality, so you don't have the problem. Just affinoid for a moment. You don't have the problem of good. I'm, she, about, I'm trying to do that now. <laughs> okay, I will stay clear. <laughs> Just afternoon now, yes. yes. So, example. So here is a Lie lattice. Well, obviously you can take k circle tape x, del x, and then multiply it by a big power of pi. And it needs to be non-negative here, otherwise it's not Lie algebra. And then if I do this construction, I will get a Banach algebra, non-commutative, which 
as a k vector space and as a Banach k tate x module is isomorphic to the tate algebra in two variables, k, x, and a new variable. That's what it looks like. Oh, you are fixed n. Fixed n. Uh, it is a non commutative. Ah, you say that it is. Ah, it is isomorphic as a module to the commutative guy. Okay, this is what you say. Yes. Okay. So, um, and D cap is just the intersection of these non commutative rings. Okay? So it contains, in particular, the Tate algebra K Tate X. It will contain del, so it will contain the D of X, as it were, so the hybrid thing, affinoid in the base direction and polynomial in the cotangent direction and more stuff on top. And that's what it is. And this is M. Um, yeah. And I should say, of course, this is just O of T star X as a threshold of X. And so, because of this, this is morally, at least in my mind, a rigid analytic quantization of T star X. So, theorem um, we've thought quite a lot about this now and we're pretty sure this is the right definition in particular it globalizes nicely so this definition satisfies Tate's theorem So take the standard site associated to a rigid analytic variety, just open it, open affinoid subsets, um, or a G topology in the sense of BGR if you prefer, and then decap is a sheaf. And now comes the sheaf. Yes. We're vanishing. I check how much. Um, okay, but it looks a bit wild, doesn't it? If I want to have some kind of decap modules, I need some control, I need some finiteness conditions on um, modules over decap X and sheaves of decap modules. Fortunately, Schneider and Teitelbaum have already worked this out. They have defined a nice category of modules called codemissible modules in particular, which will give a definition of what codemissible meant at the start of a talk, because they did prove that the distribution algebra of any compact Periodically group is Frechet Stein. So that's the definition we're about to give. So, a question on your, on your statement. Uh, so, when you say vanishing higher check cohomology, do you refer to check to coverings of X by affinoids or to covering of an affinoid by smaller affinoids or both cases? Both cases. Both cases. Ah, okay. Because surely a small affinoid is also a phenol. And the definition is. No, I mean, you can cover. It's a functor. An, you can cover an affinoid by finitely many smaller ones. Yeah. Take the check complex and you can s say that, the, yeah. Yeah. that this, this is a cyclic. And yeah. you can also cover X itself. So you can take the cohomology of X itself, which is not a phenol. Yeah. 
X was phenoid. X is so always. It's just that's still ah, 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 X is still a phenoid. I'm not saying so The next ah. step is what you ah, think about. Okay, okay, I was confused. Still a phenoid. I will say when it's not. You are in that box. <laughs> okay, excuse me for this. No, no, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. Suppose we have a tower of Noetherian K Banach algebras um, with, I'm going to be sloppy and say flat transition maps. I think the definition only needs one side, maybe on the right, but in all cases, I know it will be true on both sides. Suppose you have such a situation, then you can take the inverse limit, and then the definition is that the inverse limit is an example of a fresh Stein algebra. Okay, so what? Well, this gives you, first of all, it's kind of nicely independent in the choice of presentation. It can happen that you have two different towers giving rise to the same inverse limit as k fresh algebras. But as long as you have one, then the category of finitely generated modules will be the same. Definition. Um, whenever you have such a fresh Einstein algebra, you can define a code miscible module, a module, and is code miscible. If whenever you um, say think of it geometrically, it's some sheave defined on the whole cotangent bundle. Whenever you pull it back to some bounded affinoid subset, it's coherent. Um, coherent, basically. But <laughs> I'm very sorry. Is a binary generator a, a module? For all n. Yeah. Completely algebraic. What? Only algebraic, no, just algebraic, yes. Algebraic tensor product. So it's quite amazing that with this definition you get a nice abelian category. Well, the proof's not deep. Um, so let curly C of A be um, the category of code miscible A modules. So to avoid misunderstanding, so a finitely generated module is code miscible. Yes. But not convincing. The problem is that fresh Einstein algebras are not Noetherian, unfortunately. So there are lots of examples of finitely generated modules which are not finally presented. Our next result is that our D cap rings are always fresh based on affinoids. Uh, when you say in, is in the bigger category, usually this is in such a context there is an ambiguity whether you mean the kernels of kernels exist in this category or they are equal to the ones in the bigger one of all A modules. I think both are true in the setting. 
every abstract morphism is continuous, the kernel is closed. It's very nice. But we actually don't have to be <laughs> Okay, so with this in hand, I can define the global version of DCAP coherent modules. M is code miscible if, well, obviously I would want its sections on the near phenoid to be code miscible in the sense I've just defined. But I do need an extra condition which is analogous to quasi coherent in the algebra geometric world. I'm very sorry. Um, can I not go into the details of this symbol? There is a very nice and very obvious thing you can do. You can do a completed tensor product. It's basically um, tensor product as Fréchet spaces. But you can make sense of it in the situation. And I do require that. Whenever I have an inclusion of a thinoid V inside U, then basically M of V is completely determined by M of U in the functorial way. So here X is not an affinity. That's correct. And it means that you so have yes. already the definition yes. of that, Yes, I'm very sorry. At this point I say, right, so now from now on X is general. Okay, so you glue the previous definition. Yes. Is it true that M is the inverse limit of M tensor A, A, N? Yes, it is. It follows from the definition or you have to put it as an extra condition? I don't remember the technical details, but I think you have to do a bit of work for it. Okay. You have to show that R1 limb vanishes at some point. You have to do something. I'm sorry, I'm so used to using it as a black box, I don't remember the proof. <laughs> As it is, whenever the tensor algebraic tensor products are finally generated, the module is the inverse limit. Something like this. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's fine. It's a fair you define the way I did. So, in fact, you confused me. No, so far I think, let me um, take it back that I have extended. X is still a phenoid here, okay? I've just oh, defined yes, sheep. Yeah, yeah, just is still a phenoid here. Yeah. I do have here, now extend, so follow my program. Um, so, can I remove this now? Yeah, you can remove it. So, with X still a phenoid, CX um, will be the category of co-admissible sheaves of decamp modules. W, X is still a phenoid here, okay, but now they're sheaves at least. Three.
that is an equivalence of categories. Between modules, so code miss modules over d cap of x and sheep, which are code missable in the sense defined. And so it follows that the sheep category is also linear. And I think I do mean it to be as a full subcategory of the category of sheaves and modules. So now we extend. Extend by shiftification. D cap and CX to every smooth richer than six space. Um, and I think, well, we've got three definitions of CX, but I think the one I gave actually works in general. You fast it. Where's it gone here? So if you take this definition, X is no longer a phenoid, and you impose these conditions, it's a theorem that this category is the same as that you would have got if you were to, you know, have a sheaf which had the property that there was some covering such that on each covering its restriction was lock of something. So it kills them. Can I lift? So I am terrible with boards. <laughs> Here's our next theorem. So suppose I have X, which is a closed, smooth sub-variety of Y, smooth, rigid. I can I have D cap modules of X, and I have D cap modules of Y, and I can ask what's the relationship. And so it turns out that the D cap modules on Y, having zero sections away from X, are equivalent to D cap modules on X. So I have stated these as theorems because I have written them up and I'm 99% confident they're true. And if anything after this is not written yet. I'm still confident that the next one is true, so maybe. They're not written yet, so maybe I'll put quotes around them to be safe. <laughs> the next expected theorem is phi. Dennis and Bernstein localization Suppose I have um, 
a linear form on H with values in K, H being the Lie algebra of a split maximal torus in G as before, so let's suppose it's split for simplicity. But it's a Lie algebra theorem, so I don't care. Um, and dominant in the way I've defined earlier, and regular meaning that um, the stabilizer in the veil group under the shifted action is trivial. Then, um, so actually, I have not defined D lambda cap but we have a definition which is valid. So you can define U of curly L cap for any K comma OX Lie algebraic curly L. Not just a tangent model, you can take a twisted cotton, twisted thing. So everything now here makes sense. BN is a smooth rigid analytic variety. You can talk about co-admissible sheaves of decap modules, which are defined locally and glued together on affinoids. And the um, when you take global sections, you will get modules over the Aaron's Michael envelope of the Lie algebra. These are fragmented. Yes. And I should have said, I'm very sorry, one of the easiest examples of a fresh Stan algebra is the Aaron's Michael envelope. The Aaron's Michael envelope UG cap that I defined as a set of power series, you can define it as um, U of L cap, where L is a finite dimensional of the algebra. You take the inverse limit of the U of finite rank things. Okay. So, um, this gives you a bridge between modules over our Michael notes. And these sheaves. So it's completely proved or it's expected. It's not written. I believe it to be completely proved, but it's not written. It's not written, so. I mean, at the very least, I'd be very confident if I was to impose the same condition on the prime P as I had in my other paper on formal mm -hmm. things, because there we need to use techniques of Fezzel Kavnikov to actually compute global sections, and they, they, for technical reasons, very assuming P is a very good prime. And so I think we can just write down a proof using that. But this thing should not depend on P at all. It's just very silly. Anyway, so... Corollary. Why do we care? Well, you can, for example, construct modules from geometry. Constru construct irreducible modules in the following way. Of course, this is a, an idea as old as the original localization theorem, but it's nice that it works here. I have um, maybe a point in the flag variety. Maybe I have just a fun, trivial vector space, one dimensional on it. I can demodule, push forward it to a skyscraper sheet on the flag variety, take lobed sections, and this will give me some kind of completed VMR module for the Lie algebra, for example. But of course, I don't have to take a point, take any closed variety, 
maybe with some something interesting on it. So BN is the flag variety? Um, it's the rigid analytic variety associated to the flag variety of the algebraic group G. Okay, so it's proper in the sense of rigid analytic Correct. geometry. Yes. And why uh, is a, a closed rigid analytic so, so it's also proper non that algebraic Yeah, so it's a global one. It's not just because depending on which topology. Okay, I mean you use. Uh, okay, I'm using the analytic topology. <coughs> close embedding. Okay, depends what you mean by close embedding. Close is close rigid topology. Okay, but any affinity. Okay, I understand it. Then I'm very sorry. Ah, so it is algebraizable by Gag, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the simple code must be much over the iron's back I'm I'm out of time. And I haven't said anything about equivalent things. Uh, what do you want me to do? So, uh, do you want to take maybe five minutes again, or um, just to see? I think you cannot go more than five minutes. Not more than five minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, sure. And then I will give a definition, and maybe I'll just sketch it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Expect it again, because it's not written. Five minutes. Okay. <coughs> So um, let's just for safety G to take G to be compact. Um, as before. Um, next to be a smooth thinoid. And G acts on X continuously and differentiably. So that's G is open. G is open, yes, open compact, yeah. So here, obviously, by functionality, it will preserve, preserve the ring of power bounded elements in O of X and induce an action on the reduction of X. And let's assume that the action of G on the reduction has a finite image. And indeed, the action of G on any OX circle mod pi to the N OX circle is, has a finite image. At least that. So this is what happens when G is an open compact subgroup of G of L acting on the flag variety. You, you might have a small group stabilizing a smaller thenoid in the black variety. Um, then you can do the following construction. It's. Um, don't have time. You can take d cap of x, or d, dx of cap, it's the same thing. I can take the abstract skew group ring. That's stupid. It doesn't take into account the topology of G. And then I complete it a bit. How do I do that? I look at various things involved in the definition of D cap. There were these Banach algebras. And then if for any fixed L, if I let G approach to 1, if I look at very small subgroups of G, they will stabilize it. And in fact, they will be acting as exponential of Lie algebra elements. Since I, since I don't have time, I'll just say that this is the inverse limit of all possible pairs L and N where this makes sense. And alpha is just the derivative of the action of G.
that let's say Li algebra homomorphism from Li algebra of G into T of X in this case. Mm. Because it's Li algebra homomorphism by the Baker Campbell Hausdorff formula, this expression here is a group homomorphism from N into the group of units. Um, and so this makes sense. And if I can define look at just G stable. In X. So it might be empty if G is big enough, so that's not good. But G is small, it will have at least some elements in it. Um, and then expected theorem 6. X, W slash G. Just notation. I want to use that notation to define that set. Um, this thing should be a sheaf on this G topology. We'll have to find out coverings. Again, a fresh A stand algebra. Again, vanishing higher. Check our knowledge. And um, finally, let me just remark that um, um, here's another definition. Let um, X mod G sub W be G stable um, quasi compact open um, subsets of X. Or maybe not that, not, but finite unions of things which are G stable. Then this is a good G topology because. Well, sheaves on the rigid space are the same things as sheaves on the adic space in the sense of Hubert. And G acts on the adic space, so I can take X adic mod G as topological spaces. I give it the quotient topology, and then I pull back the site structure. So X is... Uh, X at the moment is just a phenoid classical rigid that's space. That's a phenoid, because otherwise you will... So that's a global, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> None of this is written, so. Work in progress. <laughs> Yeah, all of this is working broken. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we should probably do and then we we'll talk about this Okay, let me write down a remark the theorem. So that's a Huber space. And so the expected theorem is, well, given if you believe theorem 6, then you might believe that I can define some version of co-admissible D cap star G modules in the same way, gluing locally. Because everything is locally, at least fresh Einstein. And so finally. Um, seven GB open compact 
um, than lambda as before. And then I can write down code missable. Of course, this has not been defined in the stock, <laughs> but whatever it is, it's going to be equivalent to what I want, namely the objects on the representation vertex side, which are co-admissible modules on the, of over distribution algebra, which are duals of admissible representations, which occur in number two. Um, but of course, and of course, because I'm working with lambda, I need to impose a fixed infinitesimal central character. Sorry for taking so long. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, maybe we take first questions from Tokyo? Uh, so I'm going to raise some more questions. If there is no questions from Tokyo, so it's yeah, okay. I will uh, know how to listen. Okay, then we go to Beijing. Are there any questions in Beijing? Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I have a question. So in your talk, you define the category CX for the smooth rich analytic space. And I suppose you have two. Uh, so suppose you have a morphism, uh, for example, a proper morphism uh, of smooth rigid analytic space x to y, then how it would hit the, the, the category C x and C y? Does there exist a well defined uh, direct image factor from C x to C y? Um, in the case of a closed embedding, we have a well defined direct image functor, which featured in the statement theorem for i plus. Uh -huh. I yeah. believe that it will also work in the proper case, but we have not checked the details. There will be problems okay. in the case when the morphism is not and proper. Uh, okay, so, so you, if your answer is uh, for closed immersion is okay, and it's your serial four, and for other uh, form morphism you, you, you haven't checked yet? That's right. Am I right? Yes, but uh, it should be okay. okay. Yes. It should be okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Other, thank you. Other questions from the G? No. Okay. So. I think no. So you can take a few questions from us. No, but there was a question in the in the beginning. Yes. So there was some question of foundations what, in the beginning. What, what is the to, definition of those formal series? Yes, we we have to discuss them. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we we postpone them just after we cut. But are, are there other questions? Do you have other questions? Uh, no, because this is very uh, far from what I can uh, because okay. I'm not really. I, I don't know precisely, so I cannot ask questions. Okay. This, so so uh, maybe I have just uh, one uh, question. In some sense, here you you work always with the rigid analytic variety. So if you take the point of your formal scheme. Yes, I, I forgot to apologize that my abstract said via equivariant formal models. Yeah. And that's because yeah. I came up with this definition in the last month. <laughs> <laughs> Beforehand, I didn't know how to do things equivalently properly, so I was going to go by a book and you buy all the models and it just works. Okay. And you, do it and you take the geocorrent objects and they remain not Yeah, So you can form it in that way, but it's just easy to go at it directly. One for now, maybe both Thank you. So, are there any questions from Tokyo?